Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you guys about the language learning F word. Fluency. Specifically in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a new concept known as microfluency, an idea that has the power to completely reframe your quest to become fluent in Mandarin Chinese. So recently I came across a language learning blog post on imlearningmandarin.com that really resonated with me. The post is called What is Microfluency and Why Should You Aim for It? And it's written by educational technologist Duncan Parrish. Duncan defines microfluency as mastering the ability to comprehend and use foreign language within a small vocabulary size. And he argues that you should become a microfluent with a few narrow topics first before gradually expanding your vocabulary to cover larger sections of the language. It's a simple idea but one that goes completely against conventional wisdom in mainstream language education. You see as Chinese learners you're often encouraged to continuously inflate your vocab to as large a size as possible. The smaller your vocab the lower course leaders will deem your Mandarin level to be. On the other hand the more vocab you cram the higher level be rated. So let's say you've been learning for a year and have memorized around a thousand common Mandarin words. At this level many formal courses will class you as an elementary or low intermediate learner. Now if you want to climb up the proficiency ladder you might be told to memorize tons of vocabulary on loads of different topics so eventually you can pass a test that tells you you've reached an advanced level. And this system works pretty well for passing exams but the trouble is memorizing thousands of words for tests doesn't mean you're able to understand and use those words in real life situations. Many learners who boast an advanced vocabulary size of many thousands still struggle when it comes to holding basic conversations. I meet people in this boat all the time and understandably they're usually quite frustrated with their level. But on the flip side it's possible to achieve highly advanced even near native like levels of listening and speaking mastery within a small range of vocabulary. Learners who achieve this might be officially classed as an elementary or lower intermediate according to a test score but they can often function at a high level in familiar real life situations after only a year of intensive study. In other words they've become microfluent. So how does this work? Well here I can speak from my personal experience. You see the reason Duncan's concept of microfluency resonates so much with me is because it's exactly the approach I took to learning Chinese. Remember this video where I was interviewed in Mandarin by popular YouTuber Rita the Accent Coach? Um well, when that video was recorded, I'd only been learning Chinese for about one and a half years, and the comments were full of learners who had been studying Chinese for more than a decade and insisted it was simply impossible for anyone to become fluent so quickly. And here's what they were missing. Obviously, I hadn't mastered a native-sized vocabulary in 1.5 years. I hadn't miraculously turned into a native speaker overnight. What I had done was become extremely microfluent on four or five topics that were relevant to my life and I could practice talking about every day with my Chinese friends and girlfriend. Back then, I actually had a relatively small vocabulary, probably not much more than 2,000 words. Almost certainly smaller than many of the people who were commenting who had been learning for 10 years or more. But the difference was, these weren't just some words I'd memorised for a test, these were words I'd fully acquired through hundreds of hours of input and output practice and constant feedback from native speakers, and I could use them to effectively convey meaning in the language pretty fluently. From the start, my focus was on learning how to use a few words well rather than lots of words badly. I started out getting extremely comfortable using the most common 500 words to exchange greetings, talk about my day, and exchange basic information. This involved lots of repetition, exposing myself to the same kind of conversational phrases over and over again, and drilling them using Anki flashcards. Once I nailed that, I expanded to being able to express more complex ideas about topics I was interested in, such as language learning. Now clearly at the 1.5 year mark that you saw in my video with Rita, my Chinese was far from perfect. I'd frequently encounter comprehension barriers if I ventured too far out from my comfort zone. Expressing sophisticated views on medicine or politics would have probably been a stretch, but this didn't bother me. My Chinese was more than good enough to start functioning in the language, engage in meaningful conversations, and establish strong ties with the Chinese people in my life. And most importantly, I was having a great time. And since then, I've gradually expanded my vocabulary to encompass a much broader range of topics. But less about me, why should you become microfluent? Well, to finish off, I'm going to give you my three reasons why setting microfluency goals can benefit everyone on their Chinese learning journey. Number one, you can set attainable goals. Learning Chinese is a marathon and it's all too easy to get into a rut where there's no light at the end of the tunnel. To avoid burnout you need to set goals which you can achieve within a reasonable time frame and becoming microfluent in one area of the language is something that's achievable in a matter of months so you'll be able to witness your progress and stay motivated to achieve your goal. Number two, your knowledge will be deeper and you'll retain it for longer. As I mentioned 
mentioned earlier, becoming microfluent in one topic requires lots of repetition, repetitive listening, flashcard drills, and having conversations on the same topic lots of times. And by getting your reps in, you'll deepen your knowledge, ensuring that you don't just memorize new words and forget them after a few weeks. You'll acquire the long-term ability to use the language in real life situations. As the legendary Bruce Lee is quoted as saying, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And finally, number three, it's more fun. If you're not having fun learning Chinese, then quite frankly, it's going to be very difficult to stay on course. And from experience, there's nothing more fun than being able to take part in fluent conversations with native Chinese speakers about the things that interest you most. Once you become microfluent, exchanging information on a few simple topics, speaking Mandarin will become almost like a drug and you'll want to practice at every opportunity. And of course, the more you practice, the more your skills will improve. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of the concept microfluency. Could taking a similar approach help you in your Chinese learning journey? Really interested to hear your views. And as usual, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button down below. That's it for today. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the video. If you want to learn how to speak fluent Chinese, but you aren't too sure how to go about it, you might want to go and check out my free newsletter on peakmandarin.com. Run by me and my friend Misha, the Peak Mandarin newsletter offers practical tips and techniques to solve all your biggest Mandarin speaking problems. It's based on what we did to become fluent in the language and what we wish our teachers had told us at a lower level. Subscribe now and we'll also send you a free copy of our 50 page ebook, telling the story of exactly how we taught ourselves to speak fluent Chinese while working and studying full time in the UK. If you're interested, you can sign up on peakmandarin.com or click the link in the description below. Bye for now.